is look at the uh, daily analysis of uh, exactly what happened during the crash and why this smoke stain is there. So what I think happened, because here's the hole. At first I thought whatever caused the uh, ESCs to burn out uh, increased the pressure a great deal on the inside and uh, caused the gases to come out through the seam. Notice you don't see that on any other seam. And indeed, this is the position uh, Mariner was in the water when I uh, finally got to it. So here we have a seam of smoke stain. And what I think occurred after whatever caused the SCs to go, which it probably was short from water, um, through this hole being inverted, that gas blew out the smoke laden, what we want to call it, uh, material floated to the surface where this was just sitting floating like that in the, uh, the material. And then of course we have to explain something here as well. And uh, so the question still hasn't been resolved. Did this burn first? Was there a leak somewhere else on impact that caused water to enter in this area and short out the uh, ESC that caused the catastrophic failures and the major leak uh, within the structure. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here's the uh, where the hole is, and of course I patched that for the water test. But this burned through. So this CSC uh, totally failed. It exploded, I would think, and uh, it was very hot. And the others failed as well. And one ESC was pretty good shape, although electrically is no good. So let's take a look at the gasket. At this point, you see where gas escaped. Now, could this be an egress for water when, whenever this failure occurred? And if it was, did the gasket fail on impact at this point, causing water to enter? It was, remember, upside down, like this. So if water entered there, it would have immediately moved down into that area. So again, what came first? Here's the uh, condition of the... This, this has not been really cleaned off very well. And here's the gasket. And you can see where the blow-by gas has occurred in this area. And this all sits like that. So on impact, something distorted enough to let some water come in, entered into this arm, shorted out the ESC, causing catastrophic failure, an expansion of gas out through this area, and uh, that's it. But we have a chicken and an egg scenario. That's the best I can do. Another anomaly in this whole collision with the ocean is the battery survived. I'm charging it right now, and it, uh, I don't see anything unusual happening, so that's weird. <laughs> so whatever the short that occurred, it wasn't uh, shorted for very long. The, the current dra drain was very, very slight, um, and the uh, circuit opened quickly as far as the battery was concerned. What I'd like to show you now is uh, whether or not the case, the Mariner case, survived that crash and is still water, waterproof. 
And what I've done is place a bit of uh, waterproof tape over the hole uh, that was burned through by the ESC. And I'm going to put it in the pool and see how it fares. Okay, I emptied uh, all the electronics and uh, sealed it back up, patched the hole with some waterproof tape. And uh, let's see how this works now, if it's still watertight. Okay, it floats. Just sink it. No bubbles. It appears dry. Cool. It appears to be little dribbles in here. I don't know where they're coming from. It's really tight. But little dribbles right along here. And that's on the inside. Okay, there seems to be a little bit of water there flowing around the inside of the gasket and uh, let's see it right there a little dribble that's inside so we'll uh, let this go a little longer and see if any more than that occurs they let it float around inverted now for a bit Okay, it's been floating inverted for 15 minutes. Let's take a look at it. Well, it still looks pretty dry. Let's dry it off a little bit. Okay, now let's take a look. Well, we still got that little dribble, but uh, nothing else seems to have happened. So I guess this is pretty well sealed uh, after the crash. That's pretty good. So there we go. It survived that crash. Post failure analysis showed that uh, it did pretty good. No leaks. And uh, it's a very robust and very strong case as I concluded initially uh, at the crash site. In San Diego. So we've been looking at this from the point of view that on impact water somehow got in there. The other perspective is that because of the runaway condition this thing was flying full speed. Everything was maximum. That thing just took off like a shot. So this system was seeing maximum current. Now the question is did one of the ESC failed uh, failed, the one that actually burned through and caused the water to enter. So again, chicken and the egg uh, scenario. Um, now, was the cover firmly attached? Yes. I screwed that down nice and tight initially and gave it a little drink to make sure that uh, nothing was seeping in so we can scratch that off. On impact, that was a huge impact. I mean, the, the column of water that was sent up probably was six or seven feet high, probably close to ten from the distance I was um, when I saw that hit. And you can see in the video. So uh, that was quite an impact. Great deal of uh, kinetic energy in the system, so to speak. So that's it. It's the best I can do with uh, the information that I have. But uh, bottom line is, very rugged, robust case. The Mariner uh, system is working well. I'll ne next uh, have to check the, uh, the motors to see how they fared. But there you go. See you next time.